this is S. Lashmana Chari, working as Assistant Professor in Department of Cyber Security, Institute of Aeronautical Engineering, Hyderabad. Today, we are going to discuss the topic Auxiliary Memory and Associative Memory. So, already we know the digital computer system, it has uh, several memory devices that include uh, main memory, uh, main memory, um, auxiliary memory and cache memory. So, these are the different memory devices the computer contains. So, main memory. So, main memory, it is used to store some programs and uh, the data which are needed by the CPU. So, any program uh, that will be executed from the main memory. And uh, the second memory is the uh, auxiliary memory. So, in this session, we are discussing about the auxiliary memory. So, the auxiliary memory, it holds the programs and the data for future use. So, mainly the auxiliary memory, it is used to store the programs and the data which are not in active or which are not needed by the CPU. So, only the programs and data which are needed by the CPU only reside in the main, program, main uh, uh, memory. And whatever the programs and data which are not needed by the CPU currently that will be stored in the auxiliary memory. So, uh, this auxiliary memory we are, uh, we are using for future purpose because these auxiliary memories are non-volatile memory. So, non-volatile means even the power fails, the data stored in the auxiliary memory will be present. So, that means uh, the data stored in auxiliary memory, memory will not be uh, erased even the power failure. Okay. So, the auxiliary memory, it is uh, referred as the lowest cost because suppose if you, uh, this auxiliary memory, it is available in uh, some uh, gigabytes or terabytes. Okay. So, suppose if you uh, if you consider a 1 TB a hard disk, then it will be around some 3000 to 4500. So, that means uh, it is a low cost when you compare with uh, the main memory and uh, the cache memory. And uh, highest space or highest capacity because here these uh, auxiliary memories are available with uh, uh, large storage capacity because uh, 1 TB. So, 1 TB is a uh, it is very a uh, large storage capacity and the slowest, uh, uh, slowest approach storage in computer system. So, uh, the access time, so the access time for the, uh, this auxiliary memories are high or large when you compare with the main memory and cache memory. So, uh, this, uh, uh, the access time for the auxiliary memories are uh, thousand times that of the main memory. Okay. And uh, these auxiliary memories are also called uh, secondary memory. Secondary memory or uh, external memory because these uh, auxiliary memories are connecting uh, through some external. So, that's why it is called external memory and backup storage memory or mem mass storage media. So, these are the different other names for the auxiliary memory. So, that are secondary memory external memory, backup memory and uh, uh, mass storage media. So, the most common auxiliary memory devices used in computer systems are magnetic disks and magnetic tapes. So, these are the uh, most commonly used auxiliary, uh, auxiliary uh, memories. Okay. So, other components. So, in addition to these uh, magnetic tapes and magnetic uh, uh, disks, uh, some other uh, auxiliary devices are also there. So, that are uh, magnetic uh, drums, magnetic uh, bubble memory and optical disks. So, these are the examples of the uh, auxiliary memory devices. And uh, if you look into the characteristics of uh, the memory devices, so uh, every memory device it is having some characteristics. Uh, so, that are access mode, access time, transfer rate, uh, capacity and cost. So, these are the characteristics. So, that are access method or mode, uh, next to access time, next to transfer rate, capacity and cost. So, these are the important characteristics of memory 
device. So let's see one by one. So first one is a access mode. So what is access mode? Access mode is the way of searching the storage device. So that is called access method or mode. Okay. So uh, we have three types of access modes. The first one is a, a sequential access, sequential access, random access, direct access. So these are the different uh, access modes. First one is a sequential access. So in this uh, sequential access, the memory is searched from beginning, beginning of the memory location to the uh, until the required data found. So that is a sequential access. Suppose if you consider a a memory. So in that memory, we are searching for the data. So in this sequential access, always the searching starts from the starting address. Okay. So this searching will be continued until our required data found. Suppose if you are searching for the 90, so uh, the searching will be started from the initial address all zeros. So or required data is not found. So we are uh, we are searching next. So in this way, so every all successive memory locations will be searched until our required data found. Once uh, okay, so this is called a sequential access. So, okay, so the example of the sequential access is a magnetic tape. And the second uh, type of access method is a random access random access. So here the data present at any memory location can be accessed directly. So in this random access, no need to go in a sequential uh, manner. So directly, directly we can go to the, the required memory location address. So that is called uh, random access. So, ra okay. so the time taken to access any memory location is say suppose if you are going to the address 0 1 1 0 after that you are going to the triple one zero so the access time for the uh, the time taken to access any memory location is same okay so that is a random access so this is a fastest way to retrieve the data because why it is fast? Because we can directly go to the required memory address without going to the uh, without going through all the uh, previous memory locations. See in a sequential manner. Okay, and the example of this is a RAM random access memory. So this is a fastest way to retrieve the data. And coming to the third access method, that is a direct access. So this is a uh, it is a semi-random mode of operation in which the data uh, is stored in blocks or tracks which can be accessed randomly. So this is similar to the random access but except uh, the time taken to access any memory location may not be same. May not be same because here, see here, in the direct access the time to access 0, 1, 0 and uh, the time taken to access uh, 3110 is not same because uh, every for every memory location it is having some different uh, access times. Okay, so that is a direct access time. So that is a difference between the random access and the direct access. So in direct access, the examples are magnetic disks and optical disks. So these are the three types of the access modes. And coming to the second characteristics of the memory, that is a access time. So what is the access time? So access time is the average time required to reach a storage location in memory and obtain its contents is called access time. So access time is a, it is a average time required to reach the storage location in the memory and to obtain its uh, contents that is called the access time and this access time it consists of uh, two timings that is first one is a uh, seek time and the second one is a uh, transfer time so by combining these two times then it will be the access time so what is seek time 
Seat time is the time required to move the read or write head to proper track. Suppose if you uh, look into this uh, diagram, so this is a magnetic disc. Okay, so this is a magnetic disc. So this is uh, disc is uh, it is a uh, it is in circular uh, mode. It is a circular fashion. So on that uh, circular disc, on uh, so either side of the this disc can be used to read or write the data. So in order to read or write the data from the magnetic disc, we are using a read or write heads. So here this is a this block. Uh, this is a head read or write head. So using that read or write head, we can read either we can read or write the data into that particular track of the uh, uh, track of this magnetic disc. Okay. So seat time is uh, required to move the read or write head uh, into the proper track. So uh, the, for this uh, magnetic disc, we are having a tracks. So tracks are in in a circular fashion. So these are the tracks. So this head, radar right head, it is moving in vertically. So moving uh, forward or backward. So it is uh, the time required to move radar right head to the proper track. That is called seek time. Under transfer time, once the radar right head is uh, reached the particular track, then uh, some time is required to transfer the data to or from device that is called transfer time once the reader right head is uh, placed in the uh, particular track then it starts transferring the data okay transfer the data to or from the device that is called the transfer time so by combining these two seat time and transfer time then we can get the access time and third one is a transfer rate so transfer rate is the number of characters or words that the device can transfer per second so that is called a transfer rate after it has been positioned at the beginning of the record next uh, capacity capacity is the amount of data a device can store that is called the capacity next uh, cost so these are the different characteristics of the memory devices are coming to the magnetic disk so magnetic disk and the magnetic tapes these are the examples of the auxiliary memory device so first one magnetic disk so what is magnetic disk so magnetic disk is a circular plate it is a, a circular plate constructed of metal or plastic coated with a magnetizing material so here you can see so these are the disks magnetic disk so this disk is in a circular plate it is a circular plate and it is constructed of metal metal or plastic and that coated with a, a magnetizing material so usually both sides of the disks are used to carry carry out read or write operation so uh, either side that means uh, on for the disk uh, top side as well as bottom side both sides we can use uh, to store the information that means either we can read the information or we can write the information into the that uh, disk and several disks may be stacked on one spindle with read or write heads uh, available on each surface so uh, it is not a single disk so several disks uh, so two or more so several disks uh, are stacked on one spindle with the read or write heads available on each surface okay. so that all disks rotate together at high speed and not stopped or start from access purposes so bits are stored in magnetizing surface in spots along concentric circles called tracks so here you can see in the diagram so this is a tracks so these are the tracks so these are the tracks so tracks are in circular way so the information is stored uh, on this uh, tracks so the tracks are commonly divided into sections called uh, 
sectors. So see here. So this entire tracks we are dividing into a small parts that is called sector. So you can see here this from this point to this. So this is called sector. Okay. So what is sector? Sector is a it is a minimum minimum quantity of information that can be transferred. That is that is a sector. Okay. And some units use a single read or write head from each disk surface. The the track address bits are used by mechanical assembly to move head into the specified track position before reading and writing. So see here. So this uh, square part. So this is a read or write head. Okay. So this is a read or write head. So this head it is moving in this a uh, uh, vertical fashion. So on the over the disk it will be moving. Okay. So so that it can read the uh, read or write the data from the disk. So this is a physical structure of the magnetic disk. So these are the disks. So these these are the disks. So all these several disks are stacked onto a a single spindle. So this is a spindle. And uh, uh, read or write heads are arranged on both the top side and the bottom side of the every disk. So here. So this is a one. Read or write head. So this is the second read or write head. Third. Okay. So several disks and the several read or write heads are using. Okay. So these are the track. Uh, these are the uh, these are circular fashion. These are the tracks. And each track it is a uh, divided into sectors. So already we know. So sector is a it is a minimum number of. Four. Uh, in a minimum number of information that can be transferred okay next one. so the auxiliary storage is organized in records or blocks so always the auxiliary storage it is arranged or it is organized in records or blocks and a record is a, a specified number of characters or words reading or writing is always done on enter records magnetic drums and uh, disks are quite similar in operation both consists of high speed rotating surfaces coated with magnetizing magnetic recording medium and the rotating surface of the drum is a cylinder and uh, that of the disk a round floor plate bits are recorded as magnetic spots on the surface as it passes a stationary mechanism called reader writer so always the bits are stored on this tracks so using the reader write head we are reading either reading or writing the data into the particular track and coming to the second Uh, type of the uh, another example of the auxiliary storage is a magnetic tape so the using this magnetic tape uh, we can uh, listen the audio okay so the magnetic tape itself is a strip of plastic so here uh, inside that magnetic tape we are using a strip of plastic and that is coated with a, a magnetic recording medium so bits are recorded as magnetic spots on the tape along several tracks usually 7 or 9 bits are recorded simultaneously to form a character together with parity bit so basically one byte that means uh, uh, eight bits are used one byte means eight bits so out of that 7 to 9 so 7 to 9 are the bits we are using as a data and one parity bit we are adding so total it will become eight eight or more so reader write heads are mounted one in each track so that the data can be recorded and read as sequence of characters okay 
so see here so here we have a inside we have a read or write heads read or write heads so using that we can uh, read the bits stored in the strip of plastic mantic type u reads can be stopped started to move forward or in reverse or can be rewound so using this mantic type either we can we can stop or we can start or either we can uh, move forward or either we can move backward so all that operations we can perform with uh, this mantic tape and gaps of unrecorded tapes are inserted between records where the tape can be stopped the tape starts moving while in a gap and attains its uh, constant speed by the time it reaches the next record so see here so here in this magnetic tape we have heads this is a playback head and this is a record head so this is a erase head so using this erase head we can erase the data which is stored in the strip of plastic and this is a recording head and this is a playback head so using that uh, this head is used to play the audio okay so this is a uh, about the magnetic tape and coming to the associative memory so when the data is accessed by the data content rather than data address then the memory is called associative memory so usually the cpu can access or it can ex execute the program using its uh, address but here uh, when the data is accessed by the data content other than address then the type of memory is called associative memory so associative memory it is also called content addressable memory because here we are searching the data using the content instead of address so that's why it is this type of memory is called content addressable content addressable memory shortly we can call cam on many data processing applications requires the search of item in a table stored in memory so because in some applications we need to search some items from the memory okay so an assembler program searches the symbol address table in order to extract the symbols binary equivalent the number of accesses to memory so it depends upon the location of item and the efficiency of the search algorithm so the number of access to the memory so mainly it depends upon the two factors the first factor is a it is a location of the item so where the that location uh, the particular item is present in the memory and the another one is the the type of the efficiency of the search algorithm because all the algorithms are not having same efficiency so every algorithm it is having different uh, efficiencies so that always the algorithm with uh, the best efficiency high efficiency will be considered and many such algorithms have been developed to minimize the number of accesses while searching for an item in a random or sequential access memory so the time required to find an item stored in memory and to execute the item can be considered uh, reduced considerably so the time required to find an item stored in the memory and to execute the item can be reduced considerably if the stored data can be identified with the content other than the address okay so suppose if you uh, if you if you find any item with its address then if you execute it takes more time so by searching an item and execute the item using its content is a somewhat speed so the memory unit access accessed by content it is called associative memory or content addressable memory cam okay so when a 
word is to be read from associative memory the content of the word or part of the word is specified so we have a, a memory we have a, a memory so when you are uh, when you are going to search any word then we need to specify the entire word or the part of the word okay so that it will uh, compare compare with the all the words which is, which are stored in the memory associative memory the memory locates all words which matches the specified content and marks them for reading so see here an associative memory is more expensive than random access memory because each cell must have storage cap capable capability as well as logic circuit for matching its content with an external argument so this associative memory is a, a somewhat a, a expensive when you compare with the random access memory because in this associative memory each cell uh, it has a storage capability as well as a logic circuit because the cell in the associative memory each each cell it is having some internal logic circuit so that's why this associative associative memory is a somewhat expensive than the random access memory for this reason the associative memories are used in applications where the search time is uh, critical and must be very short so that's uh, due to the expensive of the uh, associative memory this memory we are not using the uh, all the areas so where the time is very very crucial or very very important there we can use this type of uh, associative memory and coming to the block diagram of the associative memory so here so this is a block diagram of the associative memory so here you can see the argument register it is represented with a and the next one key register k and match register m associative memory array and logic this is a associative memory logic uh, associative memory array and logic so its size it uh, the memory is having m words and uh, n bits per word okay so it consists of a, a memory array and logic for m words with n bits per word so we have m words and the size of every word is uh, n bits and the argument register a and the key register k each have n bits one per each bit of a word so see here so this is a argument register so the argument register it can store n bits n bits similarly the key register so key register also it can store n bits it can store n bits so each word in memory is compared in parallel with the contents of the argument register so whatever the word we are going to search that we have to store in the argument register suppose if you are searching 10 suppose if you are searching 10100001 so let us assume this is a, a word that we are going to search in the associative memory okay so once you have set that uh, uh, word into the argument register then this uh, word is matching with uh, all the words in the associative memory okay so when it is matching only with the key register it contains the one it contains the one so the words that match the bits of the argument register sets a corresponding bit in the match register so see here so here the m the match register so the match register bits are equal to the the number of words in the associative memory so see here so how many words are there in the uh, associative memory so total m words are there so the match register also it contains m it contains 
m number of bits m number of bits so after the matching process those bits in the match register that have been set indicate the fact that the corresponding votes have been matched okay so see here suppose it is having the associative memory it is having word 1 word 2 word 3 and so on up to word m suppose uh, this is a word 1 suppose if the the word which is stored in the argument register if it matches with the word 1 in associative memory then that corresponding bit in match register that means uh, what is the corresponding bit in match register that is a bit 1 so bit 1 will be set bit 1 will be set whatever the words will be matched then that corresponding bits in match register will be set to 1 and the remaining all will be zeros so here we have assumed four words four words so that means how many bits are there in the match register four so we have four bits in match register okay suppose if the word 1 is matches with word 1 so the corresponding bit in the match register that means the corresponding bit in match register is means first bit it will be set to 1 and if the remaining words are not matched then the corresponding bits in the match register will be set to zero so the logic one in the match register set to one it corresponds to uh, corresponding words have been matched it indicates that the corresponding words matched reading is accomplished by a several uh, sequential access to memory for those words whose corresponding bits in match register have been set okay. so see here so this is a block diagram so this is a argument register this is a key register so already we know what uh, what is argument register argument register is the register that uh, which stores the actual content that uh, what we need to search in the available uh, associate to memory okay so actual content whatever the data or whatever the word that we are going to search that we are storing in the argument register after that this word will be compared with all the words in the associative memory when it will be compared when the argument register word will be compared with the words in associative memory only if the key register contains ones the key register contains ones only that corresponding bits will be compared okay next what is the key register the key register will provide a mask for choosing a particular field key from the argument register next so the entire argument is compared with each memory word if the key register contains all ones otherwise only those bits in the argument uh, that have ones in their corresponding position of the key key register are compared so to illustrate with a numerical example suppose that the argument register a and the uh, key register k have bit configuration shown below so you can better understand uh, uh, the scenario with uh, some example so that is a uh, a so what is a a is the argument register okay so in argument register uh, this is a data stored so that means uh, this is the word we are going to search in the associative memory okay and next to k key register key register so when the argument register word is compared with all the words in the memory if the key register contains number of ones so see here so here only the first three bits of the key register will be logic 1 and the remaining are zero so only the first three bits only the first three bits of the argument register and the first three bits of the all the words will be compared the remaining bits will not be compared because the key register is not set to 1 so that's why only 
the first three bits we are comparing okay see so what is the date of the first word one word one one zero zero but what we are searching one zero one this is the uh, the word we are searching so we are searching uh, we are searching the words starting with one zero one starting with one zero one but this word one is started with one double zero so this is not matched okay next next we are uh, uh, searching next we are comparing second second word again 101 so the second the word to word to it uh, the word it starts with 101 so 101 101 so both words are matched so match next after that uh, it is comparing with the remaining words so if you Uh, see third uh, third word then the third word it starts with uh, 110 so 110 but uh, uh, but there is no match because we are searching 101 but here 110 is there so that's why the third word also not matched after that we are searching uh, we are comparing fourth word fourth word so fourth word is 011 so fourth also not matched okay so only the second word matched with the argument register word okay and coming to the match register match register is represented with m so already we have seen the number of bits in match register is equal to the the number of words in associative memory so here how many words are there in the associative memory four words are there so that means the number of bits is equal to the uh, four in match register whatever the words will be matched then the corresponding bit in match register will be set to logic one okay so this is a first bit in match register second bit third bit fourth bit so which word is matched when we compared second word so that's why the second bit of the match register will be set to one and the remaining are zeros so it is the m m the match register is equal to 1 it indicates that the uh, selected uh, the selected word is ready to read okay and coming to the relation between the memory array and uh, external registers so this is a argument register so already we know the argument register it contains n bits so this is first bit of argument register this is a uh, Jth bit of argument register. This is nth bit of argument register. Next, uh, this is a argument register. This is a key register. So this is a first bit of key register. Jth bit of key register. Nth bit of key register. Okay. So coming to the word uh, associative memory. So this is a associative. This is a associative. memory okay so the associative memory it contains m it contains m words m words so this is first word i i third mth word so total m words are there and the size of each word is n bits so c11 so what is c11 so for the c we have two subscripts so the first subscript it represents first word first word and uh, the second subscript indicates first bit so first bit in first word next jth bit in first word nth bit in first word so similarly the second uh, ith word and mth word and we come to the match register so match register the number of bits in match register is equal to the number of words in associative memory so the words in associative memory is equal to m so that's why m uh, m m is there so m1 mi m uh, m okay so this a1 so when k is equal to 1 okay so this argument bits Are compared with uh, all the bits of the word only if the k is equal to one. If the k is equal to 
वन सपोज इफ द के इज इक्वल टू जीरो देन दिस ऑर्गुमेंट रजिस्टर ऑर्गुमेंट बिट और रजिस्टर विल नॉट बी कंपेर्ड विथ द वर्ड इन असोसिएटिव मेमोरी सो इन दिस वे वी आर सर्चिंग द वर्ड विच इज अवेलेबल इन द ऑर्गुमेंट रजिस्टर विथ द वर्ड इन असोसिएटिव मेमोरी so in this lecture uh, we have discussed about uh, the auxiliary memory so different types of the auxiliary memories and how we can search a word inside the associative memory thank you like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates